Thank you. Um, statelessness, as you probably all know, has a devastating impact on the lives of millions of people around the world. And I've seen this firsthand as, uh, in my role as a Goodwill Ambassador. They experience um, marginalization and exclusion from cradle to grave. And those of us who have a nationality and have a paper identity, it's often very hard for us to imagine, um, because we take this for granted, just like breathing. It's hard for us to, to imagine uh, the, the degree of invisibility that, um, and uh, despair, often, that uh, stateless people experience. Not only do they not belong anywhere, but they're denied an education, medical care, they can't, um, their mobility is extremely limited, they can't travel, no driver's license, they're unable to work, they can't open a bank account, they can't marry, and um, can't even get a death certificate. So talk about a low carbon footprint. It's, it's total invisibility. And the desperate and horrific gift that they often give to their children is that their children too become stateless. So it's a, it's a generational problem. And when I was in um, Lebanon on one of my first uh, missions with UNHCR, um, I, I had the privilege to meet with many stateless families and um, and then of course Lebanon is a country which um, has the nationality laws inhibit their mother conferring nationality upon their children and I met one extraordinary young girl, Rama, who was at the time nine years old. Her mother was Lebanese and her father was from uh, a minority and so was a stateless man. Mother was unable to confer her nationality onto her daughter. So Rama was stateless. She was one of the brightest, most intelligent uh, young girls I've ever met. And um, even at the age of nine, her hopes of what she called of becoming a baby doctor, she could feel were becoming dimmer and dimmer and dimmer because the prospect of her ability to, to go to high school were, um, were very slender. And I could also, as a parent, relate very much to her parents' anguish and guilt and their, their sense of powerlessness of of um, being able to change that situation. And it was a, a very inhumane and heartbreaking and devastating situation. And as, as uh, Carol attested, statelessness often has quite simple, straightforward uh, solutions. I mean, there are many causes, of course, for, for statelessness, but it is a man-made problem, and it is solvable. Like in Rama's case, it is simply a, a legislative change to remove the gender discrimination uh, laws in, in that country, and I applaud Sierra Leone and Madagascar for, for recently committing to, to change their gender discriminatory laws in, in their nationality laws. Um, and, but states do define citizenship, and so states therefore do have the power to, make the, to remove those roadblocks to citizenship for stateless people. Um, and I think that now is the time to act halfway through the I Belong campaign. Um, the world can end statelessness, and it's a momentous day today. Um, most of the world's countries are, are, are represented here today, and I appeal to all of those states, and it's very positive that you know, we've got you know, almost 200 pledges already to work with UNHR, uh, UNHCR to find tangible solutions and to prevent and eradicate un the unnecessary blight of, of statelessness and uh, give those who are denied their right, right to nationality um, their basic human right to belong. And as we've seen in Bangladesh, when I was there, the, the scale uh, of the problem um, caused by the statelessness of the Rohingya people is overwhelming. And I think we should learn as a species from the enormity of this problem, that what become, become a small localized problem when it goes on decade after decade after decade, it becomes a problem beyond that uh, country's borders and becomes a very, an international crisis. So let's not let other issues of statelessness get to the rise to the level of the, the, um, the problems that the Rohingya and um, therefore the Bangladeshis are also experiencing. Thank you.